Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Adam from ElliotOracle.com. I'm also the author of the award-winning Fearless Tarot, How to Give a Positive Reading in Any Situation, and the upcoming Tarot and Love, Consulting the Cards and Matters of the Heart, which is also from Llewellyn Books and available for pre-order on Amazon. It is time for this week's Oracle Reveal. So earlier today on Instagram, I placed up a photo and asked you to use your intuition and ask which animal is calling to you because that animal has a message for you. And the three animals I posted were the flamingo, the elephant, and the serpent. So if you're just joining me now, ask yourself which animal is getting caught in your head because that animal has your message. For those of you who picked the uh, flamingo, the card says friendship, poise, and purpose. And Flamingo is a card of remaining uh, above it all, having poise, uh, also grace. This could also be a time to really be in your talent, in something that makes you be seen. Flamingo is colored pink, which means she's receptive, and she's also associated with that heart chakra. So this could be a time to open your own heart. And also twist your head around and look at the past and look at what came before you in order to inform the next steps you're going to be taking. Uh, first card for Flamingo is where it's best to place your focus, and we actually get the Magician card. And the Magician is the personification for the power of your thoughts. For your thoughts are like magic spells, and they're totally going out into the world and they're creating the reality you're experiencing. And the beauty of the Magician card is if you don't like what you're seeing, if you don't like how things are going, you can change it. But you need to change where you're placing your focus. For Flamingo, this is a time to remain above it all to keep your poise as you also focus on your goal to manifest. The magician says it's within your grasp. This is also a time to communicate and educate yourself. It might also be a time for writing or learning, but I just think that this is a wonderful time for Flamingo to set their intentions. And I'm really feeling intuitively right now that whatever the Flamingo is focused on really comes into full being next year, 2023. Looks like something's coming full circle. So I just think it's a time to put those intentions out there, maybe even create a vision board where you place up uh, a picture of yourself in the middle and then cut out all the words and images of the things you want to attract to yourself and you know do a little experiment and see next year how many of those things that you cut out and put on your board actually manifested. Uh, second card is advice from your inner wisdom if you pick the flamingo and here we have the strength card and strength is telling you to let your higher self take the lead. The woman on the strength card is a personification for your higher self and she's taming the lion and the lion represents the things that feel out of control in your life at this time. And so you may have great vision and want to manifest something, but it might feel like something is just still out of control. And strength is telling you that the way forward is by regaining control, by handling the lion, by putting some restrictions on it. And the lion is different for everybody. Sometimes it's their fear. Sometimes it's their anger. Sometimes it's a situation that just feels like it gets out of control. And this card is just saying, rein it in. Rein it in with good decisions. And also get organized in your thinking. I think for Flamingo, this is an important spiritual time. Two major arcana cards come up and they both assert control. The magician is control, in control of his environment and the woman on the strength card is in control of the lion. So this is a time to take ownership, take control, and really uh, place your focus on what you're trying to manifest. And then the mythic archetype that is going to help you if you pick the flamingo is Hestia. She's the goddess of the hearth, the home. And she's also the goddess of the soul flame. And so this is just a time to come home to yourself, come home to your ideas, come home to that project that you really wanted to manifest, come home to your higher self. Both of these cards are indicating that higher self and Hestia is kindling that flame within you. So I just think that this could be a time for immense spiritual breakthroughs uh, for Flamingo. And it's just important that you are allowing yourself to be fabulous and to allow yourself to rise above the old limitations and know that you're in control right now. Next, we got the elephant. And if you pick the earnest elephant, uh, the card says gentleness, temperance, and goodwill. 
And elephants are among the most gentle uh, animals on the planet, uh, especially when it comes to their own families. And they're also maternal. You know, elephants are run by the cows of the elephant herds. And so this could be a call towards uh, a maternal or uh, female power uh, that is going to be growing if you're attracted to the elephant. Uh, the elephant is also one that remembers, it never forgets. And so there's a sense of wisdom that comes from your own personal lived experience. And that that's going to really help guide your way. And also an elephant for me is associated with ancestors. So it's not just your wisdom that you can tap into, but you can also tap into the wisdom of your bloodline, of your culture, of the people who came before you, and apply it to any challenge that's in front of you. First card for elephant is where it's best to place your focus. And we got the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords says it's time to take charge. The Ace of Swords is a card of triumph by force. And there's also this empowered quality to this card. It's saying that if you act, you're gonna win. If you avoid and duck your head in the hole like an ostrich and try to uh, you know, forget everything, you're gonna lose. And so this is a card of stepping up to the plate being brave, being courageous, and know that you got this. You can do this. It's also a time to really change your thinking from uh, I can't do it or I don't know how I can do that or I'll just wait for somebody else to come in and rescue this. Uh, Ace of Swords is saying you might have to change your psychology to yeah, I can do that. I can handle it. I'm ready for this. Advice from your inner wisdom for the elephant is the Seven of Pentacles, which is a card of patience. It says that you've planted the seeds and now you need to wait for them to come into fruition. All is going well, but this might be a time where you're really taking charge of your own thoughts in the process. The Seven of Pentacles has a hands-off approach to the things that you've already seen to. So don't feel like you need to keep picking at that thing over and over again. This might be just a time where you're allowing things to work uh, and you're just allowing them to grow. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you is Clotho, if you pick the uh, elephant. And Clotho is one of the three fates who weaves the thread of life. And she can indicate that it's time to weave a new reality. I think whatever elephant is involved in is going to be successful. You're needing to take charge, but you're also needing to let things breathe that you've already seen to. So I think that it might be better to put your focus on the new thread you're trying to weave instead of trying to correct the old one. And then finally, we got the Serpent Sage. And if you pick this card, uh, it says wisdom, grounding, and eloquence. And serpents are a symbol for wisdom. They represent uh, knowledge. And also, they can have the supernatural quality to shed their skins of the past and allow new experiences to take hold. First card for Serpent is where it's best to place your focus. And we got the Queen of Swords. She's a card of taking charge. Uh, much like the Ace of Swords, the Queen also wields that tough sword. And she's also independent in her actions. She wears the butterfly crown, which means that she's a master at transforming the energy from feeling out of control with something to feeling back in charge, back on top. And the Queen of Swords is telling you to exercise your own authority and to step forward and to know that you have the wisdom to handle whatever is in front of you at this time. It's also a card of remaining above it and being a little bit more lofty and looking at things from a distance. The Queen of Swords is always associated with the sky. Uh, second is advice from your inner wisdom, and we get the Two of Pentacles for the Serpent, which means that right now you want to roll with the punches and be flexible and adaptable. You don't want to be too rigid or too fixed, and sometimes the Queen of Swords is guilty of that. She can have her mind made up. She thinks it needs to be this way. She's obviously correct. She always is. Um, and so this Two of Pentacles could say you might need to allow a little bit more wiggle room, be flexible, and don't lose your sense of humor. Sometimes a Queen of Swords is a little too serious and standoffish and doesn't remember to smile. Um, and that Two of Pentacles can indicate that this might be a time to be more inviting, warm, open, flexible, and adaptable. Um, that's going to be the best way forward for this next week. And the Mythic Architect that's going to help you uh, if you pick the Serpent is the Four Winds. And the Four Winds are just saying, 
feel where the wind is blowing um, and follow their lead. Also, there is that sky quality with the Queen of Swords and the Four Winds where you want to remain above it. You want to look at things from afar. And you also want to apply a cerebral approach to the challenge that's in front of you. But don't lose your flexibility because the winds can change. And that is this week's Oracle. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can check me out for a reading at elliotoracle.com. Otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful week and I'll see you again next time. So take care. <music>